The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of WBBZ-TV. It's time for Political Buzz, the television forum to discuss politics and issues of interest for all of Western New York. Now from the WBBZ television studio at the Eastern Hills Mall, this is Political Buzz. Hello, everybody. John DeShula with you here on Political Buzz on your hometown television station at our new time, Sunday morning at 11 a.m., and they're back. Attorney for Underberg and Kessler, Steve Pigeon, Democratic strategist, uh, known the world. And uh, also joining us, of course, returning, uh, Carl Palladino, president of Ellicott Development, member of the Buffalo School Board, and uh, outspoken uh, representative of our community. We're happy to have you back for another season here on Political Buzz on WBBZ TV. Before we get to and Owen oh, Duke, that's right. How could we forget Duke, uh, Carl's late son's dog? And uh, there he is responding because he wants his own show like all of us. But uh, he's going to join us for the half hour also. Thanks, Carl, for the reminder. We let him in here. We don't care about the school board guys that won't let him in. That, that's true. Do they let Carl come to the school or no, Duke come to the school they board? Voted they voted down. They, they said, said no. no. Oh, all right. Duke was so mad. Before we get started uh, with our guests in studio, I should mention that last Saturday here at the WBBZ TV studio, the Clarence Chamber of Commerce held their legislative breakfast, and representatives from uh, our elected community were here New York State Senator Michael Ransenhofer, Assemblywoman Jane Corwin, Erie County Clerk Chris Jacobs, Erie County Legislator uh, Ed Rath, Town of Clarence Supervisor David Hartzell, and Erie County Executive Mark Polencars. Uh, topics range from taxes in Clarence, that by the way, David says are not going up despite a bitter school budget battle the ongoing effort to possibly repeal the New York Safe Act, and, of course, Chris talked about how registering your vehicle at local DMVs puts more money back into the pockets of Western New Yorkers. As for waterfront development and the new Bills lease at Ralph Wilson Stadium, I caught up with uh, County Executive Mark Polencars for an update. Mark, a couple of big things this week. Uh, you talked a little bit about the uh, waterfront and the governor. What is the county's role in this state park and this waterfront plan? Well, the county was approached early on to find out if we wanted a piece of this 130 acres, if we were going to put forth and maybe make it a, a county park. I realized, based on our fiscal condition, it didn't make sense for us to be investing millions of dollars more into a park when we have to invest in our own county parks to begin with. So I've been working with the state as a member of the Erie Canal Harbor Development Corp to ensure that that 130 acres went to the corp, because that is the organization that has the power to actually fix that situation and ensure that that land be used for productive parkland use in the future. Uh, I, the county doesn't have much of a role as it pertains to the small boat harbor in Gallagher Beach, other than we as the health department do the water testing to ensure if people are going to enter the water for swimming or their personal watercrafts, that it's safe. Uh, so we are always involved with that, and I think it shows a good strong partnership between county and state government to protect the public. And the other piece of development this week is Bethlehem Steel, and you made an interesting personal point today at the uh, breakfast about uh, your connection to Bethlehem Steel and, and the growth in an area that literally 30 years ago when I first came to Buffalo never thought would ever be remediated. Uh, it's been 30 years almost exactly to the day since Bethlehem Steel announced it was closing and ceasing most major steel operations on the Lackawanna facility. I grew up in Lackawanna. My father was a steel worker. He out-survived Bethlehem Steel, which I remember when he retired. I said, Dad, you ever think you're going to make it to retirement? He said, no, but I never thought I'd outlive Bethlehem Steel, and he did. Uh, and thankfully, he's still around, so we can show him the work that's being done today with the investment from the county, from the state, from National Grid to ensure that that productive facility is not sitting there for another 30 years, but it's actually being used. We already have our first victory in that welded tube of Canada, invested $40 million of private sector money and is bringing nearly 100 jobs to that site to build steel, to build tubes that are used in all kinds of process. That would not have happened without the millions of dollars investment from the public and the private sector to first clean the land, and now that it's clean, to ensure that we have the infrastructure in place so that businesses can succeed in the future. Erie County is going to continue to play a role in ensuring the infrastructure is fixed at the Bethlehem Steel site. As a result of that, businesses will come to that site, will set up shop because it has wonderful port facilities, it has rail facilities, it has truck facilities. I submit to the public that of all the sites that you have in the Northeast, we have one of the best because we have 300 acres of prime real estate for economic development and the businesses are coming here and with the businesses come the jobs. And lastly, you said you've finished negotiations with, the, with Ralph Wilson Stadium and the state and the bills, a uh, 10 year lease. And, uh, but you said something interesting that maybe after that 10 year lease, maybe a waterfront stadium could become a consideration. 
Well, we certainly uh, are, are happy we got the lease done and are keeping the bills in Buffalo so they're not the Los Angeles bills. Uh, we have to continue the work that's being done for Ralph Wilson Stadium so that it can be a productive facility for the next 10 years, and that's going to happen over this year and next year. Uh, then the county, along with the state and the bills, will sit down in the stadium working committee to determine, do we need a new facility? If so, where's the best location? I truly believe the best location is in downtown Buffalo. It might not right be on the waterfront, but it should be in downtown Buffalo, whether it's on the Buffalo River or somewhere nearby, because that is the hub of our community. As I said today, when people leave this area to go on vacation, they don't say they're from Clarence or West Seneca. They say they're from Buffalo, and that's where the Buffalo Bills are based. And I hope in the future that we're able to look at these issues. And if we do need a new stadium, we didn't need a new one right now, but if we do need a new stadium 10 years from now, that we do one in the city. That's the latest from Mark Poling, cars of the Buffalo Bills lease. And uh, the Bills lost over the weekend in their home opener, but we have some wins in the primary election. Uh, so we'll pick up on that. And, Steve, uh, some of the candidates that you were uh, associated with, uh, notably Dick Dobson, who's running for sheriff, picked up a victory, and uh, Mayor Byron Brown. So your yes. reaction to what happened on primary day? Well, obviously, we're very pleased with uh, Mayor Brown's uh, victory. Um, but I think the bigger issue in the primaries is not the wins and losses. I think, uh, once again, uh, the problem is uh, that the way the Democratic Party is split. And the split Democratic Party uh, is not only, I don't think, bad for the community, it's clearly bad for the party's candidates in the general election. Uh, there's a group of like-minded people who have been working together to try to change leadership there and bring in somebody that can work with all diverse factions of the party, um, including the mayor and uh, the governor and the suburban interests, et cetera, the suburban groups in the party, the suburban committees. So I think what you basically saw is every, every, as every primary, uh, both sides have something to grow about. Both sides uh, drew blood and both sides, uh, you know, got a, a punch, but it doesn't help anybody, just hurts the Democratic Party. So it's really time for the Democratic Party to, to pull together. I don't see how that's possible under the, the current leadership of Democratic headquarters. So I think we're going to need to work towards... Uh, uh, some compromises and some, you know, perhaps some changes. Well, you had, how many years, Steve, were you Democratic chair for your county? I was uh, for about uh, seven years, six, seven years. Um, I was vice chairman for six years before that. Um, I was an elected official uh, for you know, years before that. Uh, so I've been, uh, I was the vice chairman of a West Seneca town party when I turned 18 years old. So I've been in this a long time. Yep. Um, I do know there's time, you know, there's a time when the party should, uh, fight and there's a time to come together, especially when you have good candidates for the community. Once again, our best candidates, uh, they, the other side primaries, that the best candidates for the general election. They might be able to take a group of naysayers and petty uh, haters and, and win when the turnout's very small, and they often end up winning with candidates who can't win the general. I think that happened in a couple of the suburban districts last night. Carl, your uh, response to the uh, primary in our remaining minutes in this segment. Well, uh, from what I observed, I think we uh, there's competency in uh, 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 the people who won. Uh, obviously, in the case of Sheriff, I mean, I have respect for Mr. Dobson, but uh, uh, I have great respect for uh, Tim Howard, and I think he's done a he, he's done a fabulous job, uh, despite a lot of nonsense coming out of Washington, trying to knock him down and trying to say that things at the jail weren't weren't necessarily being done properly. I think he's established that credibility with this community that uh, that was a lot of political nonsense coming down and it wasn't real. You know? We'll have more with Carl and, and, and the Steve. candidates oh. that Carl supported in the conservative primary won with along with Chairman oh, Ralph yes. Arrigo. Yeah. So congratulations, Carl, on yeah, those the, wins. The delegates, uh, the delegates to the Judicial Convention. There was an attack by these people in Niagara County led by George Maziars mm -hmm. on, on the... Uh, uh, conservative party delegate choice for the uh, judicial uh, convention and I was very happy and I lent support uh, lent support to uh, uh, Ralph Larigo and the conservative party to to uh, uh, push back on that and uh, and they right. won the great majority of them and I think s six out of seven six out of whatever. seven yeah so that was so, impressive so that, that went pretty well we'll yeah. have more with Carl and Steve in fact uh, we'll hear the latest from Carl on what's happening at the Buffalo School Board uh, some uh, rumblings on Carl's statewide potential uh, for a run for governor and what's happening in the Middle East all of that more when political buzz continues <laughs> 